To use the Puppet Warp feature in Photoshop, one important procedure has to be run through first. That's the separation of the particular part you want to warp. If it isn't on a separate layer, you can still use the feature by selecting the part, but it's not as effective. For demonstration purposes, I'm going to abbreviate this procedure a little. If I open my Layers panel, I can see that I've already selected and copied the tiger's head to a new layer and save the entire document as a Photoshop file because JPEGs, which is the original format this file was in, don't allow layers and in order to do this comfortably we need to do a layer separation. The next thing I'm going to do is turn off the visibility of the background layer here and turn on the visibility for the tiger head layer which gives me my independent piece of the image and I'm going to make sure that the tiger head layer is selected. That's actually the critical step to start the whole thing. Once we've got the particular piece on its own layer, once we've got the layer in question selected, we can go to the Edit menu and we can click the command about halfway down here for Puppet Warp. A mesh will appear around the area we want to work with. We then need to figure out which points will act as anchors, literally to keep part of the image from moving or warping. But we don't need any particular tools for this. We don't have to worry about which tool is selected in our toolbox. What we now can do, though, is move the cursor onto the mesh area. Usually we aim for the vertices, the corners, as it were. And what we want to do is click to anchor them with pins. It's literally as if we were pinning down a piece of clay or stretchy fabric. And what we need to do particularly is anchor most of the tiger's neck. I'm going to start adding pins over here on the extreme right just before the edge of the picture. They don't have to be all um, immediately adjacent to each other. Within a couple of vertices of each other is actually okay. But the thinking is that we want to anchor the part of the picture which we do not want to have move when we do the actual warping. So as you can see, I'm clicking where I want to anchor. Now once I've done that, I need to put a pin over where I want the warping or rotating to happen. Um, usually somewhere you realistically expect something to turn or, or rotate, uh, right about here might be good. A little bit of a knowledge of anatomy, if you're working with a living creature like a person or a tiger, would be some help. So now we've anchored the base of the tiger's neck, which in this case would not move. We want to have the head of the tiger sort of tilt down a bit. Then what we do is we hold down the Alt key on the keyboard. And as you can see, what I'm now going to do is move the cursor just a little bit outside the pin that I just selected. If the pin wasn't selected, I could just give it a click. I hold down my Alt key, and as you can see, I get a circle and a double arrow. Then what I need to do while I'm holding down my Alt key is turn or twist the pinned part, and you can see exactly what this does. I'm tilting the animal's head down. I let go my mouse, then the key. I could just as easily go up here to my options, type in the number if I really want to, the angle of rotation. Uh, some people prefer to do it by hand. Some people find it a little easier to type the number if they need a precise number of degrees of tilt. Once we get the amount of tilt we want, we can go back up to the options and click the check mark. And after a second or so, we can see that the head tilts down. If we compare it to the original by turning on the visibility for the background layer, we can see that the head was tilted down by at least 15 or 20 degrees. If we wanted to be a little more precise, uh, realistic in the warping, we might need to pin a couple of other spots. We might need to be a little more careful about exactly where we pin for the rotation, but as you can see, the basic technique is not too tough. You can undo and try again if you want to. You can take a moment and give the result a look to see if it's satisfactory. 
After it's done, the program will treat the warped material exactly like any other Photoshop image, so keeping a backup copy of the starting file, uh, just in case, would be a good idea.